Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Adobe updated Photoshop to version 25.11.0. In today's video, I want to talk about two new features that are found in this, the latest version of Adobe Photoshop. Now, the first new feature I want to talk about is called Generate Image. If you're familiar with Adobe Firefly, Generate Image is really just Adobe Firefly integrated into Photoshop. Now, get to it, you need to open up Photoshop. As you can see, I have it open. And if you want to go to just the Photoshop proper and not your home screen, just click on the PS that is in the top left-hand corner, and we're in Photoshop. And you'll notice on the toolbar towards the bottom, there's this new tool here, and this is Generate Image. And you'll also notice that it's grayed out. It's grayed out because you need to have an image opened in order to generate an image. And this may seem to be counterintuitive because we're creating our own image. Why do we need an image open? Well, you just need something there to start with, like a blank canvas. And by the way, if you don't see this new tool, this generate image tool on your toolbar, go to these three dots and left mouse press on it and go to edit toolbar. And you'll notice on the left are all the tools that are on the toolbar and on the right or any extra tools. You can see I have no extra tools. All you need to do is just go over here and click on Restore Defaults and click Done. And when you do that, that tool should be there. But as I mentioned, it is grayed out. We need to open an image up first. I mentioned, just give it a blank canvas to work on. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to File, New. And you could go right to Photo, let's say, and click on one of their sizes that are already here, like a default Photoshop size of seven by five inches. Or I could just go to uh, my recent uh, files or images and click on one of these or sizes, I should say. And I have one that I custom made that is 3000 by 2000 pixels. And I'm just going to use that one and click create. So I have this blank canvas now. And you'll notice that the generate image icon is active. You'll also notice that in the contextual taskbar, generate image is there as well. You could click there or there. It doesn't matter. And when you do, you'll get this generate image dialog, which is really Adobe Firefly. So I could tell this to do something, and I want it to have a cat and a dog sleeping together. And I could choose to have it just be an art image or a photo. I want it to be a photo. I could have it reference another image. So if I have an image of a dog and cat, I could have it look at that and use that as reference. I do not have a reference image, so I'm not going to use that. Or I could give it a special effect, like a kind of a look. And let's uh, go with kind of, uh, I don't know, an art deco look. Let's try that. And then we'll just click on generate. Now this, of course, will send this request up to Adobe servers and like Firefly, the image will be created there. Now, how fast this goes really depends on your internet speed and how busy their servers are. So you can see here is my first version of the image, a dog and a cat sleeping together. That's very nice. And here's another one. And you can see and it's in that specific kind of Art Deco look that I asked for. Now, one thing I should warn you about uh, when using this feature, and I found this with Firefly, when you generate images of people, make sure that they have five fingers. If their feet are showing, they have five toes. If you have more than one person, inspect the image carefully and make sure that there isn't an extra arm in the group of people because it will often do that. Um, as a matter of fact, it commonly does that. So be very aware of that. As a matter of fact, let's just try it out. So I'm going to go up to File, New. We're going to use my custom 3000 by 2000 pixel. Again, I have this blank canvas. This time, instead of clicking on the contextual taskbar, I'll click on the actual toolbar. You see, I get the exact same thing. And I'm going to click, uh, say young. What, whoops, not young. Young. What am I doing? There we go. Had my hand in the wrong space. Or wrong, wrong part of the keyboard. Young woman in cafe holding a cup of coffee. Oh boy, that was hard to type. All right. The reason why I'm doing this specifically is I want to see her hand. I want to make sure her hand is in the shot. 
So we have a young woman in cafe holding a cup of coffee. It's going to be a photo. And I'm not going to use any effect this time, so we'll just use a photo uh, with that, and we'll click Generate. We'll see what uh, Firefly comes up with in this case. And then again, you really have to inspect their fingers on this person when they're holding their cup of coffee. And here, uh, her hand looks good in that one. That one, her hand looks good, I think. There's four fingers there. There's You could see everything looks proportioned. And here, it looks okay. So just... You know, in this case, it worked out well. But when I was first starting to use Firefly, even with the latest version, whenever I would generate a person, of the three samples or variations it gave me, usually one of them would have the fingers or an extra arm in the image. So you really had to be aware of that. And I just make sure you do that because that would be embarrassing. This one I don't care for. It just looks distorted a little bit. Uh, her face looks distorted. That one looks nice. I like that one. And I like that one too. So I, maybe that middle one. But they all look very good. So generate image is new uh, in Photoshop, integrated on the, the uh, toolbar and in the contextual taskbar. Now, this next feature is, is called the selection brush tool. And uh, let me show it to you. It's kind of cool. I like it. We'll go up to file and we're going to open an image. On my desktop, I have a very old image of Virginia Beach. And you see it's just a simple scene of Virginia Beach. Now, this new um, tool, Selection Brush Tool, isn't in the brushes like you might think it should be. It's in the Lasso Tools. So if you go to Lasso Tools, you'll see it's the top tool. And it shares the same keyboard shortcut of L with the other Lasso Tools. And you'll notice then once you have this tool active, you have a brush. And if you go up, you could see you could add or subtract. You have an opacity setting, and then you have some brush um, settings here as well, size and hardness. Keep hardness towards the middle. Now, if you're familiar with the Quick Mask tool in Photoshop, it's this tool right here. This is really the same thing, but it's a little bit smarter uh, than the Quick Mask tool. With the Quick Mask tool, uh, what it is, it's a brush where you could brush on an area. Like, for instance, I'll just brush like right here. And you can see I have this kind of magenta overlay here. By the way, if you want to change the color of the overlay, click on this little gear and you could change the color of the overlay. I kind of like magenta. That's fine. So you have this brushed area here. Now, if you just click another tool, you'll notice you have a selection. That works identically to the Quick Mask tool. Now, what makes this tool a little different, and in my opinion, a little bit better, is it's a little bit smart. Uh, for example, let's go to it again. Uh, so we'll go to the uh, new selection brush tool. And let's say I want to do an adjustment to the beach. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go around the perimeter of the beach, like here, like this. And then when I let go, you'll notice how it filled in the middle. And now the quick mask tool won't do that. I would have to brush all in there. So now I have this selection. You know, right now it's it's a magenta overlay, but I could do anything. I could go up to filter and I could uh, add a specific filter to this selection, selected area only, or I could go to the adjustment layers and I could add an adjustment to this only. You'll notice that when I clicked on the use saturation adjustment layer, it has a mask and it's automatically masked. So I could come in and increase the saturation and it's only affecting the beach. Kind of cool, isn't it? I think it's kind of cool. So you have that. So let's just say I did that. Now I want to do uh, something with generative fill. And I think that's where this tool really, why it was created, um, maybe mainly, is because it ties in directly with generative fill. Uh, let me show you. I'm just going to go right here and I'm just going to paint an area right here. And then you'll notice when I do that, the contextual taskbar will have a generative fill button. So I could just click on that. And I want to put in here a flamingo and generate. And again, it's got to go up to Adobe servers and it is going to use one of your generative fill credits. Uh, I have a video on that too. And you'll see that I have three variations of very unrealistic flamingos. Right there. And I'm not sure that's a double headed one. <laughs> so uh, let's say you just like that one. Now, one other little thing I'll, I'll tell you real quick about kind of a... Uh, something new with generative fill, I should say. Let's uh, still use 
the new selection brush tool for this. And let's just go off in the distance here and like kind of brush right in here. Okay, and I'm going to go to generative fill and I'm just going to put in a uh, tanker. All right, we're going to click generate. Now it's going to hopefully just put a tanker ship out here. And again, okay, there's a very kind of weird looking tanker. That one's a little better. That one's okay too. So let's just pick one. Um, I'm not sure this will do it, but you know, there is kind of a resolution issue with generative fill. It has a res resolution image. And if you use generative fill on an image that is like super high resolution, sometimes the you'll get some pixelation around the edges. Now, I don't really see it on this specific image. But if you do have that issue, uh, what you can do is you'll notice if you hover over the choice you made, I picked the second one, you'll notice there's a new icon in the top left-hand corner here. And if I hover over it, it says Enhanced Detail. So what you could do is if you do have that issue where it just doesn't look right, the it's going from like a higher resolution, then all of a sudden it's kind of blurry around the edges where it put in this whatever you added, uh, just hover over the little thumbnail here and then click on this. Now it is again going to, um, well, it's not doing it because my variation is too small, too small of a sample. But what it would do uh, is if it was large enough is it would again go up to Adobe servers and it would en enhance the detail. Now in this case here, it, it is it does look okay. So I don't really need to do it, but I just wanted to add that because that is a feature that you might find useful if you have that kind of mismatch between the generated image and your existing image out of kind of a resolution difference. So that helps kind of make it look more realistic. And uh, again, there's always limitations to these things. With generative fill, I found whenever you add kind of wildlife uh, like flamingos, it doesn't look, it doesn't usually look good. Uh, so, but it does better with things like tanker ships and stuff like that. Um, in the case of Firefly or the new generate image feature that I used uh, in, you know, Photoshop, um, it works pretty well, as you could see, and will generate a very realistic image. Uh, but be careful with people. Just make sure they have uh, the right number of fingers, toes. And if you have more than one person in the group, um, make sure that they don't, there's not an extra arm in there somehow or something like that. So that's it. That's what's uh, new in this latest version of Photoshop. This is the July 2024 release version 25.11.0. As always, I really appreciate everyone who watches my videos. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you guys soon.